I bought Bitcoin in 2005, and I'm not even gonna be able to afford this 5090. Let's talk about it. The 5090 specs was leaked by Zotac today. And I gotta say guys, this thing is gonna be really, really expensive, like big boy expensive. I have it here on my phone. They confirmed the 5090, the 5090D, the 5080, the 5070 Ti, and the 5070. All the VRAM of these cards is now confirmed by Zotac. Well, thank you, Zotac. I have a 4080 Zotac model. You are not the AIB that we wanted, but you're the AIB that we got. So the 5090 is gonna have 32 gigs of VRAM as per the Zotac leak. Boys, let me just tell you, GDDR7 is not cheap. I'm estimating GDDR7 probably be anywhere from 20 to $30 a gigabyte. Let's say it's $20 a gigabyte. The VRAM costs alone for this 5090 would be anywhere from $640 to $960 just for the VRAM. Now, Nvidia may be getting a, you know, bigger discount than that, sure, but Nvidia is going to have to at least get a 50% margin on their product to make their shareholders happy. So do the math, boys. Just the VRAM is going to cost anywhere from, you know, $600 to $900, be like $2500 like <laughs> At least that's where the AIBs are going to scalp this thing to, maybe even $3,000, guys. With the 4090 out of stock and at $2,000, it's not looking good for anybody that wants the top tier performance with actually a lot of VRAM, guys. We're just going to have to settle for 16 gigs of VRAM. Not only is it going to have the 32 gigs of VRAM that you know was speculated a couple months ago, it is going to have that 512-bit bus, as confirmed by Zotac. Guys, the memory bandwidth on this thing, I think it's gonna be like 1700 gigabytes a second, something like that, or like 1800. With 32 gigs of VRAM, this thing is going to be alien technology to what I have now. I have a 4080, it will literally be like twice as fast as my 4080 with double the VRAM. Like, that's crazy. It's sure it's gonna be over double the price, but like I, I'm over here using Tave Man technology why they're just gonna give everyone alien technology with more money than sense. And it's kind of crazy to see that. I'm gonna say, this is going to be upwards of 50 to 60% faster, probably around 50% uh, faster than the 4090, which is just astronomical. This thing will be so fast. If your game does not run correctly on a 5090, you need to get out of the industry because it will be able to handle anything. So yeah, the 5090D is also going to be identical, same amount of CUDA cores, same VRAM, just downclocked a little bit to meet the China regulations. Nvidia's got to fill those wallets up. 5080, it's, you know, just the 10% more CUDA cores and then 16 gigs of VRAM on a 256-bit bus. So literally this thing is half of the memory configuration in both memory bandwidth and in um, 16 gigs of VRAM, 256-bit bus. This is the scraps that the gamers get now. It's Nvidia's world. We're just living in it now, guys. You hit 256-bit bus, 16 gigs of VRAM max, and you're gonna like it, and you're gonna pay $1,200 for this GPU. I estimated the 5080 to be 25% faster than the 4080, and that puts it right around a 4090 in performance. Um, I think, honestly, the 4090 would still be a better card than the 5080, because it's gonna have more VRAM, and it's just gonna be, um, I think once we get even faster CPUs, the 4090 would probably still edge out the 5080. If they come out with a new DLSS technology that is exclusive to the 50 series, which would be really scummy if they did that since they already just did that with 40 series, then maybe you can make a case for the 5080 over the 4090, or if you know, it just costs less because the 4090 is insane. Um, you can make a case for that, but it's just crazy to see like we gamers get the scraps now. Just welcome to this new life. Maybe Intel can save us in a couple years when they get to the high end. I mean, God knows the B580 is killing it in the low end now, $250 MSRP and selling out like hotcakes. I see a lot of people in the comment section upset. They're like, it's all a lie. You can't get the grab the B580 for $250. Guys, this happens with every GPU launch that is anticipated. Any GPU launch where the price performance is actually good, yeah, the GPU is gonna sell out day one. I predicted it um, in my first video. Like. Obviously, if the graphics card gives us good price performance, everyone's gonna rush out and buy it because there's pent up demand um, because we haven't had any graphics cards like that in like four years. Like, so of course, like um, the last graphics card that gave us like really good price performance like that 
uh, like that was actually at the price, like not scalped. Probably, you know, 1080 Ti or like RX 580, 5700 XT. Those are like the last time we got actually good price performance and they sold on the street for that price. So just wait for a minute. The B580s will come back in stock, but I'm going to say it right now. This RTX 5090 with a 512 bit bus, even if it sells for $3,000, will sell out day one. It will probably be scalped. It will be um, uh, selling out for probably at least a couple months, a few months. And it's going to be really hard to get, even if it costs that much money. And that's just because this is a level of performance we haven't seen before. And I'm excited, you know, to see what it can do. But this GPU is no longer for gamers. This is for, the 5090 is for NVIDIA's money bag wallets. So yeah, just had to get that out of the way. So the 5080, I predict it to be 25% faster or around 4090 in performance. It only has 10% more CUDA core. Sure, it's gonna have more clock speed, but you know, it literally has half the memory config of a 5090. So not good to see there. This interruption is brought to you by me, Silicon Steak. We are so close to a thousand subscribers, guys. Once I hit a thousand subscribers, well, you don't wanna know what's gonna happen. It's going to go down, okay? Once I hit a thousand subscribers, I am fully monetized, and then YouTube will be paying me personally just to show you guys tech tips. Guys, subscribe. Let's get back to the video. 5070 Ti. Thank God, Nvidia isn't cutting this card down too much. It's gonna have 16 gigs of VRAM, 256 bit bus. Essentially the 5070 Ti is a cut down 5080. Mm, this thing is probably going to be a, a little bit faster than a 4080. Probably like anywhere from five to 10% faster than a 4080. Um, maybe even better than that, cause it's probably gonna have more, it is gonna have a lot more memory bandwidth and it looks like it only has like 500 to 1000 less CUDA cores, but it's gonna have more clock speed. So. 5070 Ti, if it's priced around $700, could be a GigaChat GPU for the price. And I know that could be controversial, but 16 gigabytes of VRAM is all you actually need if you aren't doing crazy path tracing and all that. And for $700, 4080 performance or even better, more memory bandwidth. That could be the star of the show for 5000 series in my opinion, if you're wanting to go high end. And the 5070 confirmed, it's gonna have 12 gigs of VRAM. 192 bit bus. <sighs> Let's just talk about it. Let's just address the elephant in the room. This is the same memory config as the B580, a $250 graphics card. And we all know this five, RTX 5070 is going to be at least 550, probably $600, maybe even 650 if tariffs come in. So are you telling me you're literally going to spend three times as much for the a graphics card with the same memory config. That is crazy. This GPU also has six, 6,400 CUDA cores. It's not gonna match a 4080 with that amount of CUDA cores. This thing's probably gonna be on the level of a 4070 Ti Super, but it's gonna have less VRAM. So this is an L graphics card, 12 gigs of VRAM at the price they're gonna be selling this for is gonna be an L card. You're gonna wanna pick up a B580, 6700 XT, or even, or even like a 4070 base over this GPU, because those are all gonna be way cheaper, and it's gonna give you a very similar level of performance, especially when you're VRAM limited. The 5070 is the LGPU. 5060 here, it wasn't leaked yet, but Video Cards has the 5060 at eight gigabytes of VRAM and 128 bit bus. So, poultry uh, memory bus, sure, we're gonna have GDDR7, so this is gonna be equal, probably sub somewhere closer to, um, 192 bit like GDDR6 card, uh, not GDDR6X, but just regular GDDR6. So, you know, memory bandwidth may not be as an, big of an issue anymore, but with eight gigs of VRAM, the 5060 is DOA. We have competition from um, ARC coming in, 12 gigs of VRAM. AMD is most likely gonna give their lowest end cards 12 gigs of VRAM now, at least their uh, six class. If they don't, then also that's just gonna be dead in the water. But yeah, Intel, Thank, thank God for Intel coming out with this GPU and cementing 12 gigabytes of VRAM in the low end because we really needed it. It was getting tough out there. It was getting bad. Now 5060 Ti is gonna have 16 gigs. So this could be a way for you budget gamers to get that very high amount of VRAM on an NVIDIA card 
at a lower price target. Now this 5060 Ti with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, probably gonna be $500. So maybe 450. Still, um, the CUDA cores aren't leaked for that yet, but hopefully it could get on the 4070 performance level. That would be pretty nice with uh, 16 gigs of VRAM, even if it has 128 bit bus, I think memory bandwidth with GDDR7 could alleviate that and it'd be a lot better. What are my thoughts? I know I've been saying, talking about these leaks a little bit, but what are my thoughts just in general? Um, the 5090 is gonna be alien technology. It's going to shadow, just totally eclipse everything that's out so far, literally probably 40 to 50% faster you know, on the low end, probably 30%, 30 to 50%. It's a wide range. This is, you know, we're getting a lot more memory bandwidth. It's not totally clear how that's going to scale with this graphics card, even though I think it will scale very nicely. Um, so like 30, 50% more performance with the 5090. And that's over the 4090, which is already legendary. Just no one can touch that performance. 32 gigs of GDDR7, which is going to cost them a ton of money on a 512 bit bus just total memory bandwidth dominance this is an ai card if they're going to be marketing this to a people that want to start ai programs to run ai programs and develop these things that can actually make them money so this is going to be graded towards professionals only this is not a consumer card and it's basically a titan without the titan drivers and nvidia has really found their bread and butter with the 90 class it's going to probably come out at $2,500 MSRP. I mean, you can't sell 32 gigs of VRAM for $1,600, $1,700. It's not going to work out for their, their pocketbook. And with that, you know, it's, we can, us gamers can wave goodbye to the 90 class. We can wave goodbye to the 102 die. And we aren't going to be getting as much silicon anymore. We're going to have to get used to 400 to 450 millimeter squared dies. We aren't going to get that 600 millimeter squared die anymore. And if NVIDIA can, you know, keep the prices reasonable under $1,000, I am okay with that. I would like to see a little bit more VRAM. But honestly, we can't tell NVIDIA what to do. AMD and Intel can't tell NVIDIA what to do. At this point, NVIDIA has the leverage to tell themselves whatever they're going to do. They can make, they are a market leader. They make the decisions in this market. So that's my thoughts on the 5090. I know it's bleak, but it's just, it is what it is, boys. It is what it is. The 5080, this is going to be the basically the highest end card for gamers. It's gonna be 4090 performance and ray tracing probably faster. And I mean, it is what it is, 16 gigs of VRAM. I wouldn't wanna spend over $1,000 on this GPU personally. I, I don't wanna spend that much money for only 16 gigs of VRAM. I know there's a lot more memory bandwidth. I know the performance will be great with NVIDIA features, but I'm just not, it's not for me. I have a 4080, 16 gigs of VRAM for that performance level, I think is the max you could push. So, you know, it's just, it is what it is. There are gonna be people that buy this GPU. I don't know if it'll sell out day one, especially if it's over $1,000. 4090 or 5090 definitely will sell out day one though. So 5080, it's a very meh um, graphics card. It's, it's par for the course for Nvidia and their launches in the last couple of years. 5070 Ti, this is going to be the star of the show for people that want to get a high-end GPU that is pro going to be priced reasonably because it's going to have 16 gigs of VRAM and if it's like seven to 800 bucks, I think that's okay because it's going to be around a 4080, probably even faster than a 4080 in performance, maybe like 10% faster. So, you know, could be pretty good, especially if there's more features and all that with 50 series. I think the 5070 Ti would be the card most people would want to go for when they're spending the big bucks. And then the 5070, disappointing, 12 gigs of VRAM, probably not even 4080 performance, most likely 4070 Ti to Ti Super performance. And, you know, it's confirmed, 12 gigs of VRAM, 192 bit bus, you are getting an ARC A580 memory configuration for three times the price, and that's just uh, not cool. You know, maybe not really exactly three times the price, more like two and a half times the price, but uh, I, it's, it's cringe, bro, it's cringe. Intel needs to save the high end, just like they save the low end. Next up, we're gonna have the 5060 Ti, 16 gigs of VRAM, you know, poultry 128-bit bus, but 
you know, memory bandwidth could save it with GDDR7. And I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping that this can be priced reasonable where the 16 gigabytes make sense, but I wouldn't be hoping too much for NVIDIA. 50, 60, eight gigs of VRAM, it's DOA. And this GPU would probably be 350 or something like that. And no one's gonna buy it because I think people are starting to wise up and I don't even think this GPU could save itself. I think people would still rather buy a 3060 than the 5060, to be honest. I have no idea what this performance level will be. If I had to guess like what it needs to be, I would say it needs to be like right under a 4070 for it to be good, but I don't think it will. I don't think it will be that performance level, but I wish it was. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the leak. Um, honestly, I would have to say that people are starting to wise up to VRAM and that's been a thing over the last couple of years. People are wising up to VRAM. Nvidia's tactics I think are gonna be a lot more, a lot more difficult to do with Intel coming in with actually really good AI upscaling, great media encoding performance, like great professional application performance at a low budget area with enough VRAM and memory bandwidth to feed the beast, right? AMD traditionally was giving us that memory bandwidth, was giving us the VRAM, but they had horrible support in these professional applications and they didn't have great media encoding performance. Intel is doing everything that Nvidia is almost, but at a lower price range. So I think people are gonna start wising up, buying the Arc Battlemage GPUs, and AMD, if they come out with a new GPU, you know, that's great in ray tracing and improved encoding performance, people are gonna go with that. More and more people are gonna be switching over, especially if we can get more support in those programs and break away from the CUDA threshold. Another thing I wanted to say is um, those people that bought like a 7900 XTX, like your day of reckoning is very soon. Uh, <laughs> like rate games are coming out with more and more ray tracing and it's not looking good for your GPU. You probably should have went with a 4080. Um, even though it has less VRAM, you're just gonna get way more performance. And I think even AMD is going to make you look, your graphics card look silly very soon. I think their next generation is probably gonna have a lot better ray tracing performance at around five, 600 bucks. And it'll probably smoke your 7900 XDX. So that is not looking good for you guys. Will you sell all of your crypto? Will you sell all of your Bitcoin and take out a loan to buy 5090? Or are you gonna wait for Intel to come out with a B770? Which, hey guys, it may not happen. It doesn't look like it's gonna happen right now, but I could be wrong. Or are you gonna wait for AMD's new GPU, the 8700, 8800 XT, and hope they can come out with decent ray tracing performance, enough that can actually get you through a generation? Guys, let me know in the comment section down below. Silicon Steak, signing out. Don't hesitate. Subscribe now, don't be late. With Silicon State, the truth's in sight. Tech shine, star blazing bright.